In today's Health Watch, the CDC has detected an increase in a drug-resistant infection. It's a stomach bug spreading across the U.S. that they call a serious public health alert. Infectious disease expert Dr. Amish Adalja joins us with the very latest. Good morning. It's good to see you, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Adalja, of course, coming off of a pandemic, uh, everyone's on heightened alert, right, when we hear anything uh, like this. So tell me exactly what we're dealing with here and what's the level of concern we really need to have? So what we're talking about here is an infectious disease called shigellosis, caused by the bacteria Shigella. This has been around uh, forever. This is something that causes hundreds of thousands of infections every year and causes painful diarrhea, abdominal pain, fevers and chills. It causes dysentery. And sometimes you treat it with antibiotics, sometimes you don't. What the alert is about is that increasingly the CDC is getting reports of drug resistant strains of this bacteria, ones that are very challenging to treat. And that's what they're kind of alerting the public and the health, the healthcare field to is the fact that this is now becoming increasingly more resistant to antibiotics and that can pose a problem. And, and how does that happen? Is that a silly question? Antibiotics are something that we use to treat infections, but they're used so injudiciously. They're used in agriculture, they're used for every cough and cold, and what that does is it exposes bacteria to low levels of antibiotics to which they evolve resistance to. Remember, bacteria have been on this planet for almost the entire existence of this planet, and they know how to evolve and can evolve very, very quickly, and antibiotics are actually tools that we derive from microorganisms, so they can evolve very, very quickly to be able to outwit antibiotics, and that's what's happening is that we use too many antibiotics antibiotics, which is driving resistance, and antibiotic resistance is becoming one of the most pressing public health problems. It doesn't get a lot of attention because it's not like a pandemic, but it is something that really threatens all of modern medicine, and this is just another example of how our poor practices with antibiotics lead to poor health outcomes. So on that note, then we're going to see things like this more often because, the, like you said, the Shigella bacteria has been around for a while. There's probably other bacteria that have been around for a while, but if our antibiotics don't work, then we're going to have more of these alerts. Exactly. And we've already seen this with MRSA, with VRE. There's so many different antibiotic resistant bacteria that are out there that are making it much more difficult for people like me who have to treat these patients to try to craft together some type of regimen to treat them. And we know that there haven't been that many new antibiotics discovered or developed. So we're in this situation where we have what are called bad bugs and no drugs. And this is one of the most pressing mm. infectious disease problems we face. It's scary. Uh, so when you were describing the symptoms of this, it, it, it kind of reminded me of like a norovirus. Um, so what are the symptoms people need to look out for? Who does it seem to be most affected? And when, you know, when do you need to go get help? So because this is a, a bacterial diarrheal illness, it's transmitted through the fecal oral route. That means you get exposed to the, the fecal matter of somebody else. So traditionally that's been children less than four that have been getting this. But in this particular outbreak with the drug resistance strain, it's happening in adults, particularly men who have sex with men, because this can be transmitted through sexual contact. Uh, the, the symptoms that you need to look out for are bloody diarrhea, severe abdominal pain, fevers and chills, and, and the, the key is making sure that you stay hydrated. It's different than norovirus in that it doesn't cause you know, violent vomiting, and norovirus itself doesn't cause bloody diarrhea. It's usually watery diarrhea in that situation. So there are some differences, but there is some overlap. But this is a more severe infection than norovirus. But if this gets out of hand, it, I would guess like norovirus, though, it could be fatal. It can be in very rare situations and people who are immunocompromised, for example, but it's not something that I think can spread in the manner of norovirus. So norovirus is so contagious uh, on surfaces, or if someone vomits with norovirus, it can aerosolize those particles that you can then ingest. This isn't nearly as contagious as, as norovirus, although it is fairly contagious. If someone in the household has it, it's likely other people in a household will get it because it just takes a handful of those bacteria to infect you. Uh, but it's it's a little bit different of a problem than norovirus, but it, it it like, it's something that we have to watch and we have to make sure that clinicians know that there are drug resistant strains that are circulating so that the ordinary antibiotics that they use on them may not work and they may need to craft a special regimen for this particular strain. Real quickly before we go, I know there's been a huge outbreak in the Midwest. How much of this are we seeing in our area right now? Well, there's, th this has been an outbreak that's been going on for some time. So there are cases in multiple different states that have been going on for several years. What the CDC was alerting to is the fact that now about 5% of the isolates are totally drug resistant, whereas gotcha. several years ago, it was basically zero. Need to be informed, which you always help us do. Dr. Amish Adalja, thank you so much. Really appreciate your insight this morning.